you vote your conscience, you vote the Holy, the Holy Spirit leads you, and you ask God to show you which one to vote for, because I'm telling you, look, I'm telling you, it's what's inside their heart that's going to make the big difference, okay? So you got to watch it. Pay attention. Get these, these uh, voting, uh, I'm trying to think what it's called now, but it tells you what people stand, what they've done, not hear what they said they've done, what they've done, okay? They're the ones you want to talk to. That's the ones you want, the guys that actually have been trying to get it done. They're the guys you want. Amen. So be careful. Watch what's going on around us. It does get crazy. It's going to get crazier. It's between 9 and November. It's going to be absolutely crazy. Don't look at the party. Look at the person. Okay? Somebody say that. Don't look at the party. Look at the person. Amen. That's right. You know, uh, <laughs> anybody got any crazy neighbors? I can say that, though, yeah, I, I can say that now because I'm not living next to D.C. or Daniel. Yeah, I got crazy neighbors. I heard about my, my neighbor, he hated his wife's cat. He wanted to get rid of it, but she wouldn't let him. So finally, he decided he had enough, so he put the cat in his car and drove to the other side of town, let the cat out, and drove home. When he pulled his driveway, there was the cat walking up the driveway. He said, I cannot believe this. So the next day, he put the cat back in the car, drove 10 miles away. He let the cat out, then sped back as fast as he could. He pulled the driveway, and there was the cat yawning, walking in the house. So the third day, he's furious. He gets in his car, puts the cat in, he drives way out in the country, he drove 20 miles, took a left at a bridge, drove down some dirt roads with no street signs, and found the deepest part of the woods, and he dropped that stupid cat off. A few hours later, the man called his wife at home and asked, said, Honey, is the cat there? The wife answered, Yes. Why do you ask? He's furious and frustrated. He said, Well, put the cat on. I'm lost. I need directions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's from the new book. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, how about this one then? A group of congressmen were playing on a trivia board game one night. A group of congressmen. Politicians playing a group of uh, trivia board game one night, and one representative turned, it was his turn, he rolled the dice and landed on science and nature. The question was if you're in a vacuum and someone calls your name, can you hear it? He thought for a moment and he asked, Was well, it on or off? <laughs> okay, you guys said that was better or worse. <laughs> This whole week's been very hard because I, I, I actually had had a, a, been working on a sermon the week before uh, and, and, and really thought that it was had together, ready to go. And, and then uh, a, couple week, a couple of nights ago, the Lord started dealing with my heart and I started working on another sermon. And I said, okay, this is the one. And as I'm working on that one, the Lord opens me up again on Friday night. Now, I'm going to, I had to go to the last of Mayor's team yesterday. So I was trying to get everything done, but on Friday night, the Lord again just, just poured it on. And so I realized that I, I need to listen to Him. So this is the third sermon for this week. We're not, I'm not preaching all three of them today. Okay? So I feel good about that. Let's go. <laughs> okay. So, let's see this thing working here. There we go. So, we're going to talk about Psalm 23 and Grace. Uh, now, again, I, I'm at Emmaus, and Emmaus is all about grace. You're not going to hear about a religion. You're not going to hear about a denomination. What you can hear about is the cross and grace. And, and so I, I know that's where this was coming, the direction it came from. Uh, again, we've got people in Emmaus and in church every Sunday. Some of you, listen carefully, some of you need the revolving door shut. Some of you need a door open. Some of you need a door shut. Think about it. The revolving door, you keep saying, God, I'm not going to do it again. I'm not going to do it again. You keep doing it, doing it, doing it. God shut that revolving door. There's doors open that you don't know which way to go. So God, open the door that needs to be open. Shut the door that needs to be shut. You know, uh, uh, whatever it is, we sang about the old rugged cross. Let me tell you something about the old rugged cross. When Jesus was on that cross, he did not tap out. How I many know what tap out means? He took the whole thing. He took it all. He didn't tap out and say, enough's enough. 
Matter of fact, he didn't even tithe his blood on that cross. He gave it all. Wow. That's a powerful thought. No matter what you're going through today, no matter what you're having going on in your life, we're going to try to go through all this and if we can, that'll be fine. Uh, because we don't want to hurry God. Amen. Psalm 23. Get out your Bible. Turn to Psalm 23. Stand for the reading of the word. Psalm 23.
want y'all to think about this. This is so important. Matter of fact, uh, I, I, if, if you know somebody that's struggling with their identity, they're struggling with, are they saved or are they not saved? They're struggling with, will God forgive me? Will God not forgive me? Please see me and start a little paper, put your name on it, and I will give you all these slides. On a piece of paper, two or two, three or four at a time, there'll be the slides that you see today, and maybe next week they'll be up there so you can have some ammunition to help somebody you see struggling with their own personal, spiritual identity. Because I know them. There's a bunch of people that, that wonder all the time, are they going to make it to heaven? Are they going to make it through what they're going through? Is God really enough? I shout out what means God is enough. Amen? So, here we go. What, what is grace? Grace is God's gift of love to each of us. It's God's gift of love to each of us through His Son, Jesus Christ. Whether we deserve it or not. Wow. Let me, let me, let me say that again. Matter of fact, y'all say that with me, okay? God's gra grace is God's gift of love to each of us through Jesus Christ, whether we deserve it or not. Wow. It is a gift. It is a free gift. No strength. Isn't it cool when somebody, somebody tells you something and go, really? 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 I remember I went, I, I like, how many like Harbor Freight? They got a Harbor Freight in Washington now, so you don't have to go away to Greenville. That's right. <laughs> and, and I was needing a ladder to get up on my house, and the, but I also needed a ladder to get around in the garage, and I found this old ladder that is expandable. It goes 17 foot, or you can make it four foot high. You can make it this way. You can make it all kinds of ways. Turn it all around. It was so awesome. If you buy this through uh, some places, it's a $400 ladder. They had them there for $139. I got this little coupon that said 20% off. And I got another coupon saying it's $109. I said, well, I'm going to get a $300, $400 ladder. And then I even looked up online and people compare them, and this was a better ladder. And so I was getting this ladder. And it was down to $109 plus 20% off. So I thought it would get me a ladder for $90. I get up there and I show them one coupon. and said, yep, you get it for $109. I said, it was 20% off. And I said, no. I said, it says 20% off any item. Is it any item but that one? Now, I'm not a mathematician, but I got an engineering background. And I've taken college algebra one and two, and I've taken all kinds of, you know, math and geometry and all that. And I just had it figured out that she didn't hear me or didn't see my coupon. And so I said, it said 20% off one item. And she said, not this item. And I said, why not this item? She said, read the fine print. She said, it gets 20% off any item as long as it's not already on special and you've already got 20% knocked off of it. So I took my 20% off and put it back in my pocket. Paid $109 for the ladder. I said, well, she got me there. The fine print. Every time you turn around, the fine print. Great big letters, 20% off anything in the store. Fine print, except that ladder. <laughs> they all do it. <laughs> it. It's called marketing. Amen. I'm so glad that God doesn't do marketing. Amen. I'm so glad He doesn't do that. He doesn't say, well, God's blood will, the God's blood will save you. I had to get to heaven. And God says, well, well, the blood saves everything but that thing. The blood will cleanse everything you've ever done except that thing. Except this. Except this. I'm so glad that his blood covered it all. Amen? amen. So, so y'all say amen. Come on. Yes. And that's right. It covered it all. <clears throat> so watch this. And, 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 and at the end, I can't forget to tell you the story about the young man. The young man that, that died. I, I got, so I have to remember because I'm not writing it down. i got to remember this. I don't know how far I'm going to get this today anyway. So look. Grace in Psalm 23. Faith. 
very first thing, faith. The Lord is my shepherd. Y'all say the Lord is my shepherd. That word Lord is Jehovah Raha. The Lord is my shepherd is Jehovah Raha. Jehovah, the self-existent one, the, the eternal one. My friend, when, when Moses saw the burning bush, and Moses says, Who are you, Lord? He said, Who must have sent me? He said, Tell them I am that I am sent you. In other words, I am whatever you need, Moses. I am whatever they need. I am that I am. That word I am that I am, the self-existent one, is tied into Jehovah. Raha, Rahi, is, means companion, to keep company with, a friend, a herdsman, a pastor. Wow. That's some awesome stuff. Now think about, my God is my companion. My God takes care of me. My God is riding with me. You know, my, 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 everybody rides me doesn't like riding me much longer. I mean, it's not a lot of people... I, They've got a problem. <laughs> I have discovered everybody that rides with me gets a problem. Yeah, their problem is your driving. <laughs> <laughs> Look, DC, <laughs> DC and I had gone somewhere. Either we'd gone to a church for a revival or we've gone out to Camp Caroline for something. I'm driving back. And... and <laughs> I'm taking this curve, and he's saying, see those deer? And then he stops by there and says, see that curve? <laughs> Remember that, DC? DC said, Daddy, get me out of the car, please. I said, it'll be okay, son. Calm down. Go to sleep. Amen. <laughs> uh, I'm so glad that God rides in the car with me, not to complain. He don't shut his eyes. He's not afraid. He just says, get it, son, get it. Well, I don't know if he says that, but I do know he's going. Okay. All right. Jehovah Ra. All right. Jehovah, the self-existent one. I'm about to mess up the slides. I'm getting all caught up in that in my driving. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. Now, you've heard me say, y'all heard me say this before, and I'm going to say it now. If it, you, you think that, you know, that, that, that the Lord's trying to talk about us being his sheep is something special. We're nice and cute and cuddly. We buy. <laughs> We're nice and cute. We run through the fields. People count us when they're trying to go to sleep. La 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 la. Nice and furry and 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 woolly and and just gorgeous and it just the touch of perfect of innocence. And so that's why God decided to call us sheep. Can, can, can I tell you why I decided to call those sheep? I didn't write it down. I should have. <laughs> because sheep are the dumbest animal on the earth. They're dumb. I'm not saying y'all are dumb. Please, I'm not calling y'all dummies. Why not? Well, <laughs> some of y'all look at each other going, on, okay, now I can say it to you now. He just said it. You're a dummy. All right. No, he calls us sheep because watch this. Look, look. Have you ever noticed that the circus? They trained all kinds of animals. They got all kinds of animals doing all kinds of things. If you look at America's Got Talent, they train all kinds of animals doing all kinds of things. Have you ever seen a man without America Got Talent said, and there's Roscoe and his trained sheep? <laughs> you can't train a sheep. <clears throat> Have you ever been in the circus? <clears throat> and there's a three ring circus. Over here are the elephants. Over here are the bobcats and the tigers and the bears. And over here in the third circle is a bunch of sheep. I guarantee everybody else is going to be doing their little trick and the sheets are going to go, meh, 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 meh. Because sheep, I hate to say it, but they're done. Okay, so watch these. Here's the sheep. First off, they're short-sighted. They can't see very far. So you're going to see a few foot in front of their head. So they cannot, they cannot sense danger. They can't sense it by sight because... Because they have such short fields of vision, they can be walking right into a pack of wolves and not see them until they get right on top of them. And when they get on top of them, they're taken and they're killed. Sheep have no idea. They're short-sighted. Not only are they short-sighted, also they have a tendency to stray because they have no sense of direction. 
They're always going one way or the other. Without the shepherd, the sheep just keep going all kinds of ways. They just, they just stray. So, so here they are. They're the short sighted. They can't see what's coming. They, 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 they have a tendency to stray off without somebody leading them. And because they have a tendency to stray and because they cannot see, they are senseless to danger. And so again, they can walk right into a trap. The, 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 the uh, wolves or the lions can come and get them and it doesn't matter. And then look, once they get attacked, watch this. They're defenseless. They don't have claws. They ain't got these great old big teeth. Even a skunk's got a smell. Nothing. They are totally defenseless. And because of this, they are subject more than anything. They are so subject to attack. That's why when the sheep are out in the field, they have to have the shepherd. Because without the shepherd, they're scattered everywhere. Not only are they scattered everywhere, that's why they have these fancy sheep dogs that, that keep, the, keep them herded uh, because the sheep just will wander off. They'll wander into danger. They have no idea what's going on. They'll step right into it. And because of this, the, the enemy always knows they can take the sheep very easily if they don't see a shepherd. So now, think about this now. Because of all that, they desperately, desperately need a shepherd. Isaiah 53 and 6 says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. That's what he's talking about. We stray. We do our own thing. We, we, we have no idea the problems that are coming. We just keep on moving forward until we are totally taken out of the game and don't realize how in the world to get taken out of the game. I thought everything was going good. I thought everything was fine. Had everything moved in the right direction. And here it is. Now we're down. See, see, the shepherd knows he's got to be there. First off, the shepherd knows his purpose, the sheep's purpose is first is to represent. What in the world? A dumb animal like a sheep. Who is he going to represent? Anybody got a guess? Who's the sheep going to represent? Somebody give me a guess. The, that dumb sheep that will walk off, stray off, will be eaten by wolves, eaten by lions, has no sense of danger, just strays all over the place, has no sense of direction, no natural ability to, to, to defend itself except to run. Who's he representing? The shepherd. The shepherd. A good shepherd knows his sheep. When, you, when a shepherd comes in, they have a communal, back in Israel, they still have them, they have a communal sheep corral. All the sheep go in the corral from all the shepherds, and when they go in, you can look at the sheep. Remember, they represent the shepherd. You can look at them and see if the shepherd's done his job. <coughs> How do you see it? Because if they're scrawny, scrawny and sickly, He's not doing his job. If, they, if they're dirty, he's not doing his job. But if they come in and they look good and they have good fur or good, excuse me, good, good wool, then they know that shepherd's doing his job. So it represents the shepherd. It represents the shepherd's care. Now, at night, they're in that communal, that communal corral, in the daytime, when it's time to take them back out, all the shepherd's got to do is he walks into that corral, no matter how many herds are in there, the good shepherd can walk in. The good shepherd, John 10, the good shepherd, he says, my sheep, what? No, my The good shepherd can walk in that communal corral and call out his sheep without having to get a stick, without having to probe them. He can call out his sheep, and his sheep alone will come walking out of that corral, and it will follow him. You see the cowboy days where they're driving the, the, the cattle and driving the horses? That's not how sheep are driven. Watch this. The sheep follow the good shepherd. So he gets in front. They follow him into the fields. So... They represent the shepherd. If the sheep are not following the shepherd, 
That means he's not spending time with them. Matter of fact, if the shepherd doesn't smell like the sheep, if the shepherd does not know his sheep, then this the sheep do not represent him. So just think about something when you're going out, going out in the world. Think about how am I representing my shepherd in a good sense? When people see me, they know my shepherd's good to me. Can they tell by the way I talk? Can they tell by the way I handle things? Can they tell that I am of his flock? So the first part, first thing, sheep are the shepherd's job uh, to help their purpose is to represent. Secondly, he's supposed to help them reproduce. So now, if, if he's going to help them reproduce, now, now you're getting into some, some, some crazy, crazy territory. Watch this. And this is grace. Without grace, remember, grace is the shepherd helping us. Because you feel like you don't deserve it. I've had God sometimes, I know he's helped me and I don't deserve it. How many of you have God answer a prayer and you know you didn't deserve it? How many of you have God move in your behalf and you know you didn't deserve it? It's called grace. With grace, stuff's going to happen that sheep. Without grace, there is no reproducing. There is no representing. So you've got to have grace. Not law, grace. But watch this. In order for the sheep to reproduce, got to have four things. Remember, that's the shepherd's job, is to create an environment for the sheep to reproduce. Shepherds don't create sheep. Shepherds don't reproduce sheep. Sheep reproduce sheep. Sheep are the ones that reproduce sheep. Somebody say, somebody say, sheep reproduce sheep, not the shepherd. Ready? Number one, they got to be free from hunger. Sheep will not reproduce if they're hungry. Because a sheep will not be still as long as they're hungry. A sheep will stay on its feet, a sheep will walk around, and a sheep will look for places to eat. A sheep must be free from hunger. Free from hunger. So you got a sheep. You're trying to lead it, you're showing it where to go. <clears throat> Sometimes it doesn't want to eat the stuff you're trying to show it, it's trying to eat the bad stuff. That's when the rod and the staff comes in. And the shepherd has to pull it back and put it over here and make sure it eats the right stuff because he knows as long as it's hungry, it can't what? Reproduce. Number two, it can't have any fear. Sheep don't have to hear the wolf or the lion's roar to be afraid. All the sheep's got to do is see another sheep run. Think about it. Sheep don't, because they can't see its danger. They don't have to hear it. All they got to see is another sheep running, and they're going to run. So, the shepherd, again, with his rod and his staff, he protects his sheep, and his sheep, when they feel protected, and they have no fear, they can reproduce. And they have to be free of pests and parasites. He anoints my head with oil. In Psalm 23, the parasites will be all over the face, the flies will be all over the face of the sheep, and because the flies will be all over the face of the sheep, they would be so distracted, they could not uh, stay still, they cannot find their way to calm down, be free, be, be free from fear, they cannot reproduce. So the shepherd takes oil, and he anoints the head with oil. When he anoints the head with oil, the parasites leave. And so because he anoints it with oil, then, now it's, they're getting in a better position to reproduce. And then finally, in order for a sheep to reproduce, it has to be free from friction with others. So the sheep again with his rod and staff, he comes in, he sees sheep gnawing each other, he splits them up, 
he puts them, and puts them away from each other because he knows as long as, number one, they're hungry. Number two, they, they, they're afraid. Number three, they have pests or parasites on them. And number four, they're having a problem with others. They're not going to reproduce. So the shepherd has a very busy job. Can you imagine what he's got to do? All day long. If he's got two sheep, it's one thing. If he's got a hundred sheep, it's another thing. All day long, he's watching every sheep, not just one, I mean, not just one out of the crowd, every sheep, and he's taking care of them. But think about the care. If one goes away, he will leave the 99 to rescue the one. Wow. So, so, so here we go. They are to reproduce. And then I, I, I think I'm just going to stop. Get one, more, one more, I'm going to stop and tell you a story, and then, and then we're going to pray. We can finish this. Next week, I really, uh, I just, I'm feeling, like I said, this is just, this, this is wild. I, this is not my sermon to start with, but I really believe this, people need to hear this. Grace again, let's talk about grace. As a shepherd, David knew firsthand, it's amazing how God chose the king of Israel who was a shepherd first, then he was a king. With Moses, he was a king first. Then he stuck him in the, for 40 years he was a king, stuck him in the desert for 40 years, learned how to be a shepherd, and then let him be a leader. With David, it was right the opposite. David was a shepherd first, then he was a warrior, then he was a king. So, so here we go. He knew about the love. He knew about the care. He knew about the sacrifice. See, the shepherd first, he provides a sheep cannot provide for himself. You know what a sheep will do? Most animals will eat, eat the ground. You know, they'll eat their ground, but they won't eat all the way down. So the ground, the ground will keep reproducing itself. Sheep have to keep moving because sheep will eat all the way down into the dirt. Have you ever seen these movies where they said the sheep herders are coming in and there's a big range war because they're trying to fight with the sheep herders and the cattle men, you know why they were fighting? Because when the sheep come through, they killed the land. They had everything. They ate all the way down. They could not reproduce the land, could not reproduce itself once the sheep left. They have no idea what they're doing. The shepherd has to keep them moving. The shepherd has to provide for them everything. He has to provide them so they'll be hungry, they'll be afraid, the parasites, the friction with others. He has to provide for them. Secondly, he has to protect. Without him, remember, they don't have claws. They don't have a defense system. They can't do anything but just bat and run. You know, and he's the one that directs them. Without the shepherd, they would literally die. He positions them. After he guides them, he puts them in the right area to get what they need. I love this. John 10, 11, I'm the good shepherd. Y'all might not remember this. There was a couple that came to this church about four years ago, maybe five years ago. They came for, I don't know, maybe six months and then got a job, had to move or something. But they had a son. Actually, it was the mom and the stepdad had a son. This son was in a band. They actually had gotten a following. They had signed a little a small label, not a big label, a small label. And they were on tour. Again, this is small stuff, not great big stuff, small stuff. But he was well on the way to going from that small little bitty label where he man took care of his own stuff to, and to where he was getting ready to jump into the next level where they were going to take care of him. They'd had a concert in Virginia. I'm talking about the shepherd now, how good a shepherd is in grace. He had a concert in Virginia. <clears throat> After the concert, they were playing around in the room. And as they're playing around in the room, cutting up, he said, y'all make me so mad I could just kill myself. And he grabs his gun. He hits 
the discharge and out comes the magazine. He says, y'all make me some magazine, I just kill myself. He's playing. He pulls up the gun, drops the magazine, and puts the gun to his head and pulls the trigger. Now let me ask you a question. When you pull that magazine, if a gun's loaded, what happens? It's still there. He shot himself. Hit his brain, got both eyes, hit his brain. He's laid out on the floor unconscious. They call for the ambulance. The ambulance comes, they take him to the hospital. The mom and the stepdad go to the hospital. Rush up to Virginia. <coughs> Talking about Grace. They said he will not make it through the night. He doesn't know what's going on. He's a vegetable. He won't, he won't make it through the night. And so they're sitting by his bedside. And when they're sitting by his bedside, he starts reaching out. As he starts reaching out, the doctor said it's just nervous reaction. And then he started motioning. Like this. And so his mama gave him a pencil and a piece of paper. And he wrote, what has happened to me? He said, my body burns from my neck down and I hurt so bad what has happened to me and so they told him you were playing around with a gun you shot yourself he wrote back am I going to die and they said son we don't know the doctor says it's a good chance we don't know and he wrote back and said, I don't want to die. And they said, it's in God's hands. And then he asked, can you read me the Bible? Now remember, he was supposed to die within hours. A week later, the stepdad has read the Bible to him twice. Not only has he read the Bible to him twice, his favorite scripture, his favorite psalm was Psalm 23. The dad said, I read, the stepdad said, I read that to him, I don't know, four or five times, I think I read it to him every day, Psalm 23. And he said, on the day that he died, he said he was holding my hand as I was reading the Bible to him. He always held my hand. And he said, he said I was reading Psalm 23 to him. He said, when I got down to the part where surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, this actually happened. He said, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And when he said forever, their son dropped his hand. Now you tell me grace is not something. During that week, he had the Bible read to him. He recommitted his life to the Lord. And at the last <clears throat> verse of Psalm 23, he walked over to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <clears throat> Some of the stuff he did to get there showed to show what a sheep would do. <clears throat> Let me ask you a question. You may not have taken a gun and, and discharged the magazine but forgot there was a bullet in the chamber and put it to your head. But I guarantee you, symbolically, you've probably done that many times. Symbolically. I know I have. Done something I, I thought I knew what I was doing after I did it. I said, that was such a good thing. God, I need you. And I'm so glad that grace answered me when I called to God. 
when I said, God, I, I'm sorry, I, I don't know why I did that, or I do know why I did that, but God, I need you. Every time, grace answers me. Today, right now, I'm just going to stop it right there. Again, I, I'm just trying to be led by the Lord totally in this. I, I, I don't know where it's all going, but it'll be okay. When everybody just stand, DC, Jeff, y'all come up here. I had, no, I had no intention of telling that story today. He's the 
one that was called a timing. The next day, his whole family gathered around the bed. And I took a towel and put it behind his head. And I took a washcloth. And I filled the washcloth with water. His wife sat beside him and they held hands. And I said, do you profess Jesus as your personal Savior? He says, yes, I do. And she said, yes, I do. I said, so in the name of Jesus Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. I took that cloth. And I held over his head and I squeezed it. And when the water hit his head, that water went this way and tears from his eyes went this way. Somebody even asked about that. I said, do you think he was really baptized? I mean, really baptized? I said, he just baptized as if I carried him to the river Jordan. Within the next few hours, he was gone. He lived a rough life. And in his funeral, I said, this man was met with the most horrible word. Cancer. I said, but God met it back with the most powerful word, and that was grace. And I told the story about communion, and I told the story about baptism and being saved. And the whole place was just stunned. I thank God. Everybody, hold your head down. Put your hand, put your, hold your heads down. Eyes closed. If you're here today, and I'm just gonna put up, a, I'm gonna put it right out there. If you're here today and you found yourself being tempted. somebody, even including yourself, to be law-minded instead of grace-minded, and you found things getting rougher and rougher and rougher, and you're needing God to renew your mind about grace. When nobody else is looking around, every eye closed, but just put that hand up. I, I need God to help me better. Renew me in grace. Touch the Lord. Touch them right now in the name of Jesus. There's a lot of people hurt. A lot of people hurting. They don't need a lecture. They don't need a finger pointing at them. Because don't you know that finger's pointing at them on the inside all day long? They lecture their own self. What they need to hear is grace. That God can come in and God can work. Let's all say this together. Lord, I thank you for your grace. It truly is amazing. I thank you that we're not walking alone, that you're with us every step of the way. And we thank you that grace helps us to overcome every obstacle. And we know that you got our life in your hand. God, help us to learn to respond to life situations with grace. Help us to let that be our go-to. Grace. Grace. Powerful grace. And we thank you for it. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Tonight, we're going to be talking again about uh, 
caregiving, it's really been good. I mean, it's been awesome. There's some that have just come out of caregiving, and you never know when you're going to be called to go back into caregiving. You never know. Just like that, it can be your spouse. It can be your children. Just like that, it can be your neighbor. I have no idea. So it's important that if you've already been a caregiver and you're feeling kind of stressed out from it, this is here to help you get through healing. If you're going to be called, if you're in it right now, and or why not find yourself being called back into it, this is here for you. I promise you, you won't think it's a waste of time. It's good stuff. Not only that, but you get popcorn. All this in heaven too. How about that? Like the little boy was riding his bike to church. He had the big old saddlebag baskets. He's riding to church in a Twinkie truck. Turned over at the bridge. And when it turned over, the doors opened up and Twinkies went everywhere. And so and he rode by and said, Why don't you go with all those Twinkies, sir? He said, well, I can't sell them now they've touched the ground. They're still, in their, they're still in their pack, but I still can't sell them because they've touched the ground. He said, he said, but you can have them. And so he went and picked up all those Twinkies and stuck them in the inside of the saddlebags. And on the way to hell, on the way to church, said, how about this? All this in heaven too. <laughs> well, Grace is our Twinkie truck. <laughs> all right. Brother Wayne stuck the duck. So I say disturb us in prayer. Don't disturb us in prayer. Lead us in prayer. <laughs> Let us pray. Our Father God, we come to you today. Just thank you for the grace that you do show us, Father. We thank you for the message we've received today, Lord. Let us go out and spread the grace that you put upon us, Lord. And we ask all these things in your holy name. Amen and amen.